In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair a puncture. Before we start working on this puncture, the first thing we need to do is release the brakes. Just pull the noodle, lift up and release. If you have disc brakes, this is a lot easier, the wheel will just slip out. Just be careful not to pull the brake levers once the wheel is out, otherwise the pads can stick together. Okay, now we're going to flip the bike upside down, ready to remove the rear wheel. Most bikes these days have quick release bolts on their wheels. This particular model doesn't, but that's nothing to worry about as most decent puncture repair kits come with a multi-spanner. So I'm going to use this multi-spanner to loosen off the nuts at the back and then do the other side. Now just pull the derailleur back, lift the wheel up and out. Voila. All good puncture repair kits come with three tyre levers and these are what you need to get the tyre off the rim. Starting near the valve exit and taking the valve cap off, place your tyre levers down into the tyre and lever the tyre out like so. And using the hook around the spokes to hold it in place, take another one and a few more centimetres along, repeat the same process and hook onto the spokes. Then taking a third one, moving a few more centimetres down, you should then start being able to run the tyre lever around the tyre and carefully release the whole of the beading from around the rim, like so. Now with the beading removed from the rim, you can now remove the damaged inner tube. Pull the valve out of the valve hole and carefully pull the inner tube out, like so. Now the inner tube's removed, we remove the tyre. Always do this because we need to check for contamination in the tyre that caused the puncture in the first place. So I'm gonna run my fingers around the inside of the tyre all the way around looking on the outside and feeling on the inside and you'll normally find a culprit in there somewhere, possibly a thorn or a nail. Now it's time to find the puncher. For this, you're going to need a bicycle pump. Now I'm going to attach the pump and put a small amount of pressure into the inner tube in order to find where the air is being released. If I start pumping and I feel around the inner tube, at the moment, I cannot feel anything, so I'm going to run my hands around slowly. And here I can hear the hissing and I can see the puncher and feel the air coming out on my hands. Sometimes you'll find using your lips is a better method for a smaller puncher because your lips are more sensitive and you'll be able to feel the air. If you still can't find the puncher and you have access to one, a bucket of water is a very good substitute and will definitely allow you to find the hole as you will soon see. There is the hole. In your puncture repair kit, you should find a crayon. Now this is to mark the exact location of the puncture. I normally like to put a cross directly over the hole. So where that cross meets is where we need to apply the repair. Then take the sandpaper and give it a little rub over the damaged area, just to make it a bit of a rougher surface for the patch to attach. Now take the rubber solution and apply a square evenly over the affected area. Now it's very important you leave this now for a couple of minutes for it to set. Then when it becomes tacky, it's time to apply the patch. Now the glue's become tacky. You can place the plaster in place, push down firmly, My dad used to always tell me to run a little bit of glue around the outside of the plaster where it joins the inner tube, just to get that extra seal to the whole plaster. Personally, I'm not a fan of doing this, as if it doesn't stick properly, it can end up sticking to the inside edge of the tyre and causing the plaster to rub off at a later time. All in all, I actually prefer to not use the whole plaster method at all. I find these scabs, which are a one action peel off and stick it on plaster is a lot more quicker and efficient when you're out on the road saves a hell of a lot of time and a lot of messing around now the inner tube's fixed we should put the inner tube back into the tire placing the valve through the hole like so and then carefully pushing the inner tube into the tire 
always find it's a good idea to have a little bit of air pressure in the inner tube to make this job that little bit easier. Now once the inner tube's in place, we're ready to start putting the tyre back on. Now using the tyre levers, bit by bit, lever the tyre bead onto the rim. Moving a few centimetres along at a time, much the way we did in order to remove the tyre. Push them underneath, bend them up, and then hopefully, all going to plan, the tyre bead should start to pop onto the rim. Now if you're very lucky, you do this all in one go. But quite often, as you get to the end, it will become harder, and you may need to use the tyre levers again to lever it on, which is what I'm going to do now. So now I'm going to stick a tyre lever under here, lever that on, move a few more centimetres along, like so, and then with a third tyre lever, like so, and going back to the first tyre lever, I'll move further along, and we're getting closer to the tyre being fully on the rim. One tyre on the rim.